Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to walk you through an example of how you can fill out your Google Sheets Thinking Fonts Tracker. If you don't have this already, if you haven't purchased it and you want to watch a shorter video, I recommend you watch my quick tour. So you're going to find the link to that in the description down below. And if you already purchased it, then I recommend you watch this video. So I walk you through a step-by-step -step example of how you fill this out. So let's get into it. So you're going to start by entering the name you want to give your font. So let's say I'm going to do homeowners. And then that name has to be unique. If it's duplicated, it will highlight in red. It's very important that you assign a unique name. And then you set your goal amount. So let's say this amount of money. And then it's going to highlight to remind you what information is absolutely necessary for you to add. We're going to start saving January. 2022 and then we're gonna end in December 2022. This is optional. You can just um, for your own reference write down where this money is located. And then maybe you start off with a balance. Right now I'm not gonna add anything but you could be starting off with some amount of money. And then I'm gonna talk about this one later. So as you can see once I added my information this is the only space that you will edit. Once I added my information this table started updating automatically. So right now this table is showing me that my current balance is zero and I have this amount left which is the same one as my goal and then it's telling me that I'm gonna start saving on January 1st 2022 so that's the first day of this month and then I'm gonna stop saving on December 31, 2022. And that's the last day of this month that I entered here. So this is the number of days left until we reach this date. So today is August 24, so this is the amount of days left. And then this is the status. So this status is going to be updating automatically depending on the situation. So let's say today's August, so let's say this should have stopped in April. So this is overdue because I haven't reached my goal, but I am way past my goal date. Let's say saving stops in August, then it's going to say do this month. So let's say it ends in December, but it's going to start next month. So it updates to doesn't start yet. So that's automated. And then if you keep scrolling, you're going to get the initial suggested amounts to save. So you want to save $24,000 and you have 12 months to do it. So you get those 12 months right here. So that means you need to be saving $2,000 per month. Now, if you keep scrolling, you have the current suggested to save. So this is useful because in an ideal world, you would be saving the exact amount that you expected to save when you were setting your goals. But maybe you saved a bit more each month, or maybe you saved a bit less each month, or maybe you had to take some money out for an emergency. So this one is calculated based on your actual progress. And I left them separate so you can compare. As you can see right now, since this started on January and then in December, but I haven't added any money yet. So my current amount per month went up by a lot. And now I only have four months left. So I used to have 12, now I have four months left. Now this table is built starting next month. So today is August 24, but this amount is calculated starting on September. But what if I still have some money left this month and I want to see this updated, but I don't want to add an actual transaction. So I haven't saved the money yet, but I am expecting to save a certain amount in these last few August days. So you're gonna enter that amount here. So let's say I'm going to be adding $1,000 this month. So they're not an actual transaction yet. And as you can see, this number updated. So if I add a bit more, this number decreases even more. And then if I go crazy and add most of my goal this month, then that number is becoming smaller and smaller. And now I am below what I initially expected to save per month. So now this number turns green. And then for your own reference, you can set just manually set the last date that you updated this. And then you get this table in which your contributions and withdrawals for each fund will be added up. So right now it's empty because we haven't added any transactions. So let's go and add some transactions. So I'm going to pretend that I did everything right from January to July. So I'm going to fill out the dates very quickly. And then I'm going to select the fund. And then I'm going to add the $2,000 that I was supposed to save each month. So as you can see, this monthly summary started updating automatically. Right now it's only reflecting homeowners fund because that's all I have. So you can see a monthly summary right here. And then you can see a summary by fund right here. 
And then if you select a specific fund from the dropdown, then you can see a summary by that fund. So this makes more sense once I keep adding more funds. Right now, it's just basically showing me the same information. So once I added those transactions, if I come back, you're going to see that my current balance, it's now $14,000 which is the $14,000 that I added right here. And then my amount left is now updated to $10,000. So now if you come looking at this right now, my suggested to save starting next month is $2,500. And that increased because I haven't added any money in August yet. So if I don't want that to be a transaction yet, I can just enter that here and then I'm good and those amounts are still the same. Now let's say this month you are going to receive a huge bonus because you did something amazing at work. So let's say you're gonna be receiving $5,000. So just out of curiosity, you come in here and then you write those $5,000 here. So if you were to add those $5,000 to your homeowner's fund, you would only have to add $750 each month starting September to reach your goal. So this is just a fun way to maybe if you receive any extra money before you spend it, you can just come in here, fill this out and then realize that maybe it would be better to save it instead of spending it. So this current suggested to save turning green can be a good motivation. Now, I haven't talked about this section yet. So I know a lot of you receive maybe more than one paycheck a month and maybe you want to know how much you would need to set aside per paycheck. So you can come in here and let's say you get paid twice a month and you want to set aside money from each paycheck and you want to know how much that should be. So you just come in here and set the number two for two transactions per month. And then this will update automatically to show you that you have 12 months initially and 24 transactions. So you would need to save $1,000 per transaction. And if you have four transactions, then you would need to save $500 per transaction and that's 48 transactions. So transactions can be times of the month that you will be adding money to that fund. It can be paychecks or you can just not use it at all. It's completely optional. And then it works the same way on this section. It's going to adapt and update automatically according to how much money you have actually saved and how much time you have left. And then if you enter money here, it's going to also decrease. And then you have your contributions and your withdrawals here. So now you have contributions, but what if you have an emergency and you need to withdraw money, you can just add a negative number, select the proper fund, select the date, and then you're going to be seeing your withdrawals over here. So ideally you shouldn't do that, but if you have an emergency, you can just register that transaction here, emergency. And then I would keep this description short because of this section. So if you come into the dashboard, you're going to see these 30 tables that are completely empty. So if you come in here and you select the fund from the dropdown, right now I only have one fund, but if you select the fund from the dropdown, all of the automated information is going to be pulled into this view. And I suggest you keep your description short because the transactions are also going to be pulled into here. And then if you make them too big, they're just going to mess up the look. So I would keep that one short. But then if you need some longer information, you can add that here. So you have complete control. Right now there's only one fund, but you have complete control over the order in which your funds will appear in this view. And also if you want them to appear at all. So if you don't want them to appear once they're completed, you can just not select them here, delete that and not have them there. And then what you get here is completely automated. All you do is select your funds. So you get your goal amount. You get the last day that you will be saving. You get the first day that you started saving. You get the percentage that's completed. You get your current balance, which you get also down here and you get the amount left. Then the status will update here. So if it's overdue, for example, then that will also update here. Then you have your suggested to save per month and you can compare the initial amount against the current amount and then the arrows are also going to update accordingly. And then the same thing, but for the transactions this is the initial amount and this is the current suggested amount per transaction. And then the left to save this month and the last time you updated it, that's what you manually entered here. And then you have your starting balance, your contributions, your withdrawals and your current balance. Now this sheet you can also duplicate. So let's say you maybe want to divide them by some categories. So you can just duplicate the sheet and then just have maybe goals that are like super important 
top tier goals and then maybe nice to have so you can have that in a separate sheet and if you double click you can change the name to anything that you want so that's something you can do but then if you're even more visual i added this visual trackers right here so if you select your fund you're gonna see your goal the last day the first day how much the percentage you have saved already your current balance the amount left and then you also get this cute way to track your progress so i thought this was more fun than just adding a progress bar or maybe a, a graph i thought this was nicer so maybe a lot of you are familiar with this way of displaying it so i got inspired by the principle so a lot of people actually print it this way they print these shapes and once they reach a certain amount they start coloring them so i created the digital version of that so what you do is you said you only have to select the font and then set how many spaces you want to use so right now i have 24 so this is 6 by 4 24 and then each space is worth one thousand dollars so every one thousand dollars my images are going to be filled they're not actually being filled they look like they're being filled but this is all that's really going on is two images are being switched and you can customize that as well i'm going to show you that in a minute but then you have this view in which you start with your lowest amount and then work your way up to your goal if you want it backwards in in reverse then you have the second view in which you set your fund and then instead of starting with 1000 it starts with your goal amount so this one is filled from bottom to top and this one is filled from top to bottom and then you can also duplicate this sheet the way you would duplicate the dashboard and then just select any font that you want from the drop down so here all you will edit is you will select the font and you would change this number everything else is read only right here you will only edit this and everything else is read only now if you want to change these images you have this customized images sheet so i added a few i will be adding more so if you want to look at the finished product you can just click the link in the description and i will have a photo of all the ones that i ended up including but i'm going to add a few here and then you can also add your own so i'm going to give you an example with mine and then i'm going to show you how you add your own this is how it's going to look at the beginning and then you have your default images so these are the images that will appear initially for every single one of your trackers now if you want to change the image for any of your funds then you just have to select the font and maybe come in here and select an image so not filled i want that to be a house so i'm going to copy and paste and then filled i'm going to copy and paste this one so now my visual tracker is a house and before i change that my visual tracker were coins and once and change that then now they're houses now it's very important that you actually add an image because if you don't then you're going to mess it up and it's going to appear blank so always remember that if you select a font you need to add images and then to add your own images you can just select a cell insert image and insert image in cell make sure you select the in cell option because the over cell option is just going to leave it lingering all over your sheet so you select image in cell and then you can just either drag your image here or browse for it so, so a few recommendations if you want to add your own images i created mine using canva and then the size of my workspace was 100 pixels by 100 pixels you don't want it too big or it's going to be very slow so just add a small image 100 pixels by 100 pixels so let's add for example this hat for my filled example and then i move over to a different square and then i add this other hat and then you can just copy and paste i would initially instead of adding them here i would add them here so this can become like your sort of image database and whenever you want to add a new font you have all of these images to choose from so if you come back here now i'm using this cute santa hat so you could use that for your christmas gift syncing fonts tracker you can change this number to be whatever you want up to 366 so 366 is the maximum number and if you add more than that then it's going to highlight in red and it's going to be all messed up so remember to add only 366 maximum number of squares now if you want to change the language you can do that here in this section all you need to do is edit this 
white cells where it says your translation you shouldn't touch anything that is not a white cell so if you change that here it's going to automatically update across the entire spreadsheet so if you ever need to change a label you have to do it from this section or you're going to mess up important functionality so for example if you were to change the label here whatever then you, you just broke the whole thing. So if you need to change a label, you have to do it from this section. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, please feel free to message me on Etsy and I will be happy to help you. And also if there's something fun that you want me to build, please leave that in the comments down below. I'm really enjoying doing this. So thank you for watching.